During this time, I thought I might answer a few questions on behalf of Jean, who makes all of the Doris Visits films, the port guides. Uh, and she gets loads of questions, but one in particular is about the music, about where it comes from um, and why it's used. So Jean makes the film and she lays on music and sometimes people don't agree, sometimes they love it. And then we get all kinds of, all times of comment and no two people love the same music. So let me just get this straight. We only use music that we own the copyright on. And that tends to be music from feature films that I've made. So if we look uh, up here, this is Jean. Um, in a scene from The Scarlet Tunic, a Thomas Hardy film that I made back in 97, I think, 1997. I do not own the music to that, so we can't use it. As wonderful as it is, that is, um, it's off our radar. And we can't touch that. It's such a shame because the soundtrack's wonderful. The soundtrack I can use is the one from Bulla Quo, the status quo movie, and I can use the music between the tracks, in other words, the actual score of the film. Although I wrote two of the tracks with the band, they co-own it and it's gone through their publishing company. So I can't use those two. I can only use the score. And I can also use the score from Jean's mini-series that she made online, which was about 60, 60 odd episodes of an online drama called Shades of Bad. And she, she informs me that one day she's gonna put that back up on, on the internet. Twice, she actually won Best Actress for that in, in New York, in America. Now, that music is laid onto the films, but it's all written by the same composer. And I just thought you might like to see how the music and why the music is written. Bearing in mind he does not write the music um, aimed at the, uh, the travel films in Doris Visits, the Port's Guide, Port Guides on our channel. He wrote it for those other films and we just use it. Sometimes he would think, and I'm sure he does, inappropriately. So anyway, here's Gene with Mark talking about how he makes music work for films. Are you gonna play the... It's that simple. So, most of the people that watch Shades are Bad, the first thing they say to me is, I love the music. And this is Mark Blackledge, and he's the person that composes all the music. So Mark, how do you think of the tune when you... Well, I don't do you, think really, it's the main thing. You just play around at the piano till it yeah, comes. With, with Shades, Buster the director just wanted something contemporary. Yeah. And he quoted sort of dance music, which would have that floor on the floor. And normally dance would be quite major. But taking that as a basis, a little bit of intrigue in the minor key, moving to losing. It's that simple, really. And have you got your stop phrases where, um, so if you see something happening, um, you know to go, as you said, I mean, I don't understand. But does, so is, is mine a more spooky or do you know yeah. where to go on the piano? Yeah, and you can always, if something's sinister, if you want something sinister, you know, a relationship, if you go from C minor and you want, you go to A flat minor, if you want it to be really sinister. I've probably done that a million times. Yeah, and then so but you know when something... It's all caught, the harmonies make a difference as to how you perceive the character of someone on screen. Definitely, I think, definitely in Shades of Bad. So if I'm smiling like that, but if I'm smiling like that, the smile Something changes. behind the smile. Yeah. Yeah. And in Shades of Bad, I think, the music has become another character in the, okay. in the episode. Did you compose Shades of Bad on the piano? No. How did you Well, on a keyboard, not on, on a, a piano, keyboard. yeah. Uh, it's actually strings, isn't it? It's pizzicato strings. So that yeah. is actually plucked by the violins. We, could, we can go and have a look at it if you like. Right. In the studio. So not only do you hear the piano in your head, you hear the whole orchestra in your head when you're... Yes. And how long have you been composing? Uh, 30 years. 
35 years, 30, 35 years. Yeah. And what's your favourite thing to compose for? Orchestra. Orchestra. Although you never get to use an orchestra these days. It's too expensive. Yeah. But there's good samples, you can make it sound like a real orchestra. Do you prefer co composing for film or television or animation? Uh, I don't mind really, it depends on the style of music they want. If they want orchestral stuff, then I'm into it. Right. But I spent years doing advertising and, and music um, in Soho, which wasn't really my cup of tea, but it was good. But now I just like to play with orchestras. So what you mean, making up jingles and that sort of thing? Used to do a lot of jingles, yeah. 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 You'd get a call at nine in the morning, you'd get a brief at ten, and it might be on air that afternoon. And you'd wow. never, you didn't know what would come in, might be reggae, might be anything. Do you ever get, like, you know, writers get a writer's block no. and they just can't, you, don't, you never get that? Well, I'm not writing music for me, I'm writing music for you or for Stuart or Buster and they've got a specific brief. You can't, yeah. There's no block because they're telling you what you want. And very often here's the picture and here's the, here's the drama and, the, and this is the emotion we want. Do you hear it in your head before you play it or do you yeah. tinker about and... So you, you know the kind of thing you want and then you play it or yeah, do you... Yeah, I hear colour. Do you? Yeah, I, I hear the colour that I want to put on it and then you get that colour from the harmony and then if you're going to write melody, which, which sometimes you need to do, then that's a shape. So Mark's also composed for Stuart before for films um, and, uh, well, films, <laughs> for films. What was the first one? That was Devil's Game, wasn't it? I met you in Soho when you were talking about a film, Joe Macbeth. Wow, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah, mm. and then you did Freight a couple of years after that, I think. So we were saying that the, um, I didn't write it at the piano. Yeah. And so the, the immediate sound that came out was the pizzicato strings. So can that it's sound... a bit more dancey, it's a bit more fun than the piano really. Yeah. Can that sound like all different instruments? Um, then can you, yeah, you, can do you just... Yeah, you can play on it as a honky donk, as a select. That's a more sort of Tim Burton yeah. sort of thing, isn't it? You put those bits in, haven't you, in parts of the yeah. Um, yeah. episodes? I don't know, do you, are you catching this on the screen? Or is that a bit hard to see? Okay. <laughs> so that bass, that's just on the bass, the kick of the, um, as if it was a dance track. Yeah. Which gives it a contemporary feel that Buster the director wanted, I guess. And so, yeah, and it's catchy, isn't it? And you remember it as well. Hopefully. Now that in, you hear that sound? It's uh, actually an instrument called a zither or a dulcimer. G. G. Yeah. So that. So if you remember, you know that's the kind of '60s uh, sound you'd associate with '60s spy music. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, Get Carter. Yeah. And that I think just adds a bit more intrigue and a bit more cynicism to what's underlying quite a happy beat. Well, it definitely uh, punctuates um, the episode. So if something spooky's happening or something bad's happening, I love those little chords yeah. you put in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it that and that, that combined just makes it. It's a, it's exciting moving on. Something's happening, but there's a little bit of tension. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can you can create tension, can't you? Even if there's. And if you did it all in in uh, major, you take all the, you know. Be a very happy, a different piece. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. I just remember that little part I put in at the end was having worked with you on Buller Quo, and they very often jum to jum to jump is their kind of stock rhythm yeah. on guitars, yeah. isn't it? Which is why I put that. It was just in my mind here. It's a kind of status quo -y thing, isn't it? It's almost, yeah. it's got very sort of desperate housewives, very sort of, so now let's go and see what's going to happen next. Yeah, desperate housewives was a lot of sort yeah. of... Uh, yeah, yeah, all that creeping about. 
There's a lot of that. Yeah. Do you normally sort of watch things on, on your screen there when you're composing? Yes. So now I've got my little library of music and I'm putting it on to different parts of the um, episodes. Yeah. When you watch it, does that give you nightmares? <laughs> <laughs> no, because you, you generally put them in the right place, and it's it's the mood of the series, isn't it? Yeah. They, they sort of conjure up the mood, certain emotions, certain dynamics, but no, it makes sense. You could not, once, once you've established the style of a show and the, the, the kind of music that's going to play under it, you can almost repeat that, as you do. Yeah. Just put it anyway. Yeah, because Mark's given us a library now that we can use on, on, um, in different parts of the, the episode, so... So we can just place it where we want it now. So what's next, Mark? Because um, moving on, Buster wants to do a movie, doesn't he? And um, we could do a massive dance movie. A dance movie? Yeah. What, classical dance? Uh, classical dance, or we could mix it. OK. <laughs> <laughs> when do we start? <laughs> and we make movies. That's what we do. How long would it take you to, say, compose a uh, music for an episode? Of Shades? Shades. Uh, a few hours. Well, the first, the first one takes a lot longer. Then you've established what you're basically doing. So you've got mm. your toolkit. And then you decide which tool am I going to use for this section. So it gets quicker and quicker. So how long do you take to edit one? A long time. A long time. How long does it take for a film? How long would it take to, to score a film? To score a film. It'd be nice to have six weeks, but you often get two, three weeks. Really? So that must be lots of long days. <laughs>